So I'm going to uh, describe a little bit the kind of work that we're doing at Spotify. Um, I will uh, focus on work that we have published and we will continue publishing and then I will give a different type of talks. Um, so it is really, I changed a little bit what I was going to speak about to focus more on the theme of the, of the conference. Um, yeah, hopefully you learn some of the cool stuff that we're doing, the, the challenge we're having, and I heard already a lot of things and we, we kind of share in common even if it's come from different perspectives. Okay, so what we do at Spotify, um, people know about Spotify? Who use Spotify? Okay, um, I can't see anything here, but never mind. Okay, so just to start a little bit about um, what is the mission of the company, um, I'm just going to read it because it's been written beautifully and I can't do a better job than this, uh, is to uh, unlock the potential of human creativity by giving a million creative artists the opportunity to live off their art and billions of fans the opportunity to enjoy and be inspired by it. So this is kind of what the company is trying to do. And I will explain what, how in uh, the org uh, I belong to, we try to uh, do that. So this is to give an idea of the kind of content we're having. So in this talk, I will focus only on music. We are becoming an audio company. There's a lot of investment uh, into podcasts. I will not talk about podcasts. The content is just music. So this is to give you the kind of uh, immense catalog, genre that we're having. I don't know, can you identify yourself in some of those? Yeah? No, there's some weird stuff I never heard of. Who, 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 who is into weird stuff? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Somebody in my team was told that his style of music was having a high uh, correlation with being a nerd. So, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so, uh, the part of Spotify I belong to is a personalization team, and we have also our own uh, mission, is to match fans and artists in a personal and relevant way. So this is why we are, we are called personalization. So what does it mean to match fans and artists in a personal and relevant way? There's various things. We, there's a homepage uh, of, of, of the app. When you get into the app via search, we have uh, a number of uh, playlists that we are created that are uh, based on people taste and so on, Discover Weekly, Release Radar, Daily Mix, we also have radio and so on. So this is a kind of thing, understanding the content, understanding the user, various means to uh, access it. And a little bit more, what does it mean? So we have our, the artists, we have the catalogs, and we have the, the, the fan, the users, and the, we can organize the catalog directly into songs, into playlists, again, also podcasts. And the focus of this talk will be how we do this personalization with respect to home. So what is home? Is, uh, it is now the default screen of the mobile app for all Spotify users worldwide. Uh, the, the point of it is really that when people go into it, they just find the playlist they are wanting to listen to at the right time, but then also at the same time to pull some new thing, allowing also discovery and so on. And the idea is really to uh, help users find something they are going to enjoy, listen to uh, quickly. Um, before I dive into the kind of work we're doing, I just wanted to explain a little bit research at Spotify. Uh, many people don't know that we do research. We're kind of a small team, um, but I just wanted to, ex uh, to showcase a little bit the kind of uh, area we are involved. So we do have a website that is broken. <laughs> yeah, but that's what we're trying to do. It's, a, it's beautiful, but something is not working, so we're going to redo it. So we try to really uh, ensure that uh, Spotify products are at state of the art, and of course we want to extend a state of the art. Uh, those are the area we are focusing on. Uh, um, a big part of it is personalization, but we also have another team that is trying to understand the content from an uh, uh, audio perspective, and people that are building tools, for example, to create music, for example, helping at schools and so on. So we work on algorithmic bias, evaluation, machine learning, user modeling, search recommendation, language technology, and SCI. So those are really part of personalization, and this is where I will focus mostly. We also have data sets. We've been involved in some challenge, Rexy's challenge and Wisdom Cup. 
and and this is something so being like a research org we also working with university providing data set internship and so on um, but we, we we are small so we can't do everything but uh, we hope to be able to do much more collaboration and so on okay so let's go back to the talk so making machine learning work for Spotify uh, home so when people talk about machine learning, there's a big focus around the algorithm. The algorithm itself is not enough. It has to work. You need to get the right feature, you need to get the right measure, you need to do a lot of offline, online evaluation, and so on. So my particular interest is kind of everything outside the algorithm. <laughs> um, but um, it's true, you can have the best algorithm, just doing the algorithm on its own is not going to work. And this is maybe some of the, the what we'll be discussing, some of the things we're trying to do that. There is a lot of measurement. There is, of course, you've got uh, KPI and business metric. You have to decide what you're going to optimize for. A lot with respect to offline and online evaluation, what is a good data set, training. There's a whole area of algo bias that is very important. A lot of feature engineer, but also some of the feature that you have to build yourself, even sometimes using machine learning and so on. And also, what we also do quite a lot is qualitative and quantitative research. What do users want from home? What are the expectations? Uh, are we sure that what they want is what we deliver and so on? So in this talk, I will focus on the algorithm. So uh, partly how home is, uh, is uh, powered, partly. I will start with this and the kind of research we have done in addition to this. Uh, success, what is success on home? How we look into this? Uh, trying to understand the intent, why people want to use home, so what is the user intent and building model for that, and something in terms of uh, diversity. So there's going to be uh, home and how we have gone uh, through this. Okay, personalization home. So this is your, uh, the home, our user, and we have uh, the algorithm that partially uh, power Home is based on this paper that was published at Rexis 2018. And the system that is doing that, uh, we call it BART. And I will explain a little bit what BART is doing. So it stands for Bandit Recommendation as Treatment. So I'm not going to go into the math. You can read the paper. I just want you to give you like a, 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 the conceptual level what we're trying to do. So if you look at home, what you have is shelves. And each of the shelves, you have playlists. We call them cards. What we're trying to identify is to which, uh, how to rank the cards within a playlist, uh, within a shelf, and then how to rank the, uh, the shelf themselves. So it's like a two-stage thing. And I will describe mostly how do we identify that this is the first playlist to show and the second and, and so on. So that's what the, the BART algorithm is trying to do. It's based on this multi-bandit um, algorithm. Um, um, some of you have seen the octopus. Yeah, so more or less, you want to earn money. You have so many hands, and you're just going to go on all those slot machines. For some of them, you know, uh, you have a good uh, uh, understanding of the probability of winning, and some you have no clue. The one you have no clue, um, it doesn't mean you're not going to win, you just don't know. And in the context of music, it's particularly interesting because music is not just about listening to the same thing. Of course, you want to listen to the things you like, but there's a discovery part, something new. So this explore, exploit thing that comes with the bandit algorithm is particularly useful in that context. It allow you, get me what I want, what I like, but also give me something fresh and new. And that's why it's, it's, it's particularly suitable. So there is this exploration strategy. There's various techniques to do that. Is it like 90% you kind of exploit and the rest explode? Or there's various algorithms that we're trying into this. Uh, there is a generation of a candidate uh, set. You're not going to take all the catalog and show it. So there's a lot of uh, filtering and so on based on user vector, playlist vector, and so on. And there is a reward function. What is success? Um, and this is what, we tr of course, we try to uh, optimize, and there's various ways to do that and so on. So, but the, uh, the particular things that is interesting is what is success in, in, in that case. Uh, yeah. So in um, current uh, number of implementations, success is you stream. 
for more than 30 seconds. It means like, so you got the playlist that was shown to the user and the user play, and it lasts at least, the stream lasts at least 30 seconds. So that is success. It's, <coughs> it's a kind of, uh, it's like click-through rate, but it's, it's to try to avoid accidental click. So a little bit of time, so at least you can hear the music. You can define an idea of like, yeah, I like it or I don't like it. Okay. So that is home. There's much more to this. <laughs> okay, there's a lot of engineer, there's a lot of trial, there's maybe some shell that are a little bit different, that are treated differently, but that's the general idea of how uh, home runs. So now is the kind of research we've been doing is um, we want to personalize respect to success. Uh, I'm very a data-driven person. I like to plot distribution. I usually get hypotheses for whole paper by plotting distribution. Most machine learning people do not plot distribution. They predict things that is good, but they don't realize it's wrong, <laughs> and so on. Um, okay, who is uh, who likes sleeping playlist? Okay. Okay, so people that like sleeping playlists, they're kind of a bit more, they're a bit different. <laughs> <laughs> and so on. But more importantly, if you are looking to sleep and the system returns a right playlist for you, success is when you actually don't stop the playlist soon because the whole point is for you to fall asleep. Okay, so the 30 second as success uh, metric is just wrong. Okay, so that is the idea. Depending on the type of playlist, the 30 second does not mean a lot. Now, who is into jazz? Okay, so you have a zen feel to you. You're more patient. <laughs> People that listen to uh, a jazz playlist, in general, whatever playlist you listen, that, that is not even jazz, you tend to listen to it longer. So you're cool, you're zen and so on. So there is this notion that some people will just like it, not get it, but some other people, no, I, I'm going to try it longer. And maybe the threshold of like, no, this is garbage, is a bit different depending on the type of user. And actually we can see that on the data by just plotting things and just aggregated and, and aggregating and so on. So how do you use that? Various way, so let's just maybe this 30 second, maybe it's not the right thing because 30 second is just a click a non-accidental click. So maybe let's try to find a reward function that account to kind of, well, I want to have a bit more time to decide uh, I like this playlist or not. Let's try another thing, a reward function per user and per playlist. That is harder. The data is often going to be small. You will have to do some approximation and all those kind of things. And usually, on, Although everybody is different, playlists can be different, but there are some commonality in some type of user and the way they behave with some type of some certain type of playlist and so on. So the idea we uh, uh, decide to focus on is to kind of group playlists per users and we use co-clustering uh, for this. So how this work? Again, this is an algorithm that uh, we didn't invent it. It was uh, published in 2003. So instead of clustering, we just co-cluster. So you have all the playlists, you have all the user, your, uh, your metric here is the streaming time, uh, 30 seconds, 20 seconds, one hour, and so on. And what the co-clustering is just kind of group things together. So people here is going to be user with similar behavior with respect to a certain group of playlists. Uh, there is still the problem, like in clustering, how many co-cluster you have and so on, but this is where mostly trying to see whether there is a message there or not. And then if you do that, this is what you have. You, you try to build some sort of a signature of a type of playlist or type of user. So for example, this is a playlist type where this is particularly listened to by this second group of user, which is different, for example, to others. Well, here is a particular, um, is, yeah, so no, sorry, this is, and this is, will be, for example, from the user perspective. So this is a group of users that listen a lot to the second type of playlist and a bit more into the others. Okay, is that? So we try to f identify some semantic into this. We kind of fail. 
So we try, okay, so we have those cluster. We're trying to say, okay, what it is? Is this, can we associate some semantic? It was an intern project and so on. So we, we just gave up after a week and so on. But Dutch, Colombian, it was a bit bizarre. I think we wanted to understand what is this kind of behavior per user, per playlist. So more work to be done. I like always to explain what's going on. So that's why I imposed that on the interns, but we didn't find anything. But let's go into uh, what we did with it. So we have this kind of core clustering, so trying to identify particular behavior. So we can use now, for each of those core clusters, we're going to have the bandit algorithm optimizing it depending on which cluster uh, we are. And for this, we decide to do some thresholding or various other way to define the reward function. One is just to take the median or average. One is to take something that is allowed for just a bit before and a bit after. We call it additive and well is like more continuous. So something here, this is uh, uh, failure, success, and the further you go there is success and the further you go there is success. So here it will be kind of limited, uh, reduced success, high success and so on. So just try to, to give a bit of some nuance uh, depending on the, uh, uh, the streaming time. So those are the results. Um, a, big, a, a lot of, a, a lot of uh, uh, data and so on. So this is the baseline. So this is, we, uh, we, we use, in that case, uh, the, with the bandit algorithm, you have a lot of random data. So you can do counterfactual evaluation which try, it's, a, it's another way just to run a lot of tests uh, and trying to uh, uh, look at very hypotheses that you're having and trying to see whether they hold or not. So the baseline is just by using the 30 seconds. If you use a random threshold, let's just say 30 seconds, uh, sorry, uh, maybe uh, one minute, we already obtain a better uh, result. And this we're trying to uh, estimate expected stream rate. If we use the global mean base, so this is where you take the whole distribution of the whole data, you just take the mean, we get much better performance. So the playlist success is how long people use, listen to it and maybe have within that distribution uh, a way to say success, not success. Uh, surprisingly, but uh, we didn't look at it and maybe it's not so surprising for some other, is using this kind of harsh just threshold works better than something a bit more complicated when we want to try to uh, incorporate some nuance of success. But maybe there's not enough data for this. Now, when we look at the clustering, again, this is the baseline, we can do a clustering just with respect to user. So co-clustering is n time m, but it could be one time n, m time one, and so on. And also content clustering and accounting for uh, both works better. And we try to look at what is happening. So we try to uh, rank features in terms of the uh, significant power. So this is where the baseline, the baseline tend to work a lot with respect to what time of the day, the age of the users and so on. And the further we incorporate streaming time, we incorporate features that are associated with the type of playlist and the affinity of the user. So genre is what kind of uh, playlist the user is listening to and so on. And here is what kind of playlist themselves it is. So it works. So maybe uh, this is how, what we call it personalizing success. Okay? Remember, it's two o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> I need your help. <laughs> okay. Okay. So if you're happy, we're going to go to the next bit. Can I ask a question? Please. Because many of your distributions are, are look like power laws. Yeah. So then statistics like mean and standard deviation seem less meaningful. I don't view it this as the way to do it. This was pure exploratory. Going for the 30 seconds to something, let's try to do something a little bit more, mm -hmm. and so on. And this was done also on the subset, a subset of very clean playlists. Mm -hmm. uh, we have playlists that have uh, a thousand tracks, while some will have four. So there's much more work to be done to get it right. It was just a way to say, look, we need to go from a click to something more associated with dwell time. But and then if you decide to go through that, you need to do it properly. Okay, um, intent. So why, what is the expectation of user on, on home? Um, so we carried out uh, a survey 
um, using mixed method, a user interview and in-app survey, and other way we added to maybe identify some intent we, uh, we, that didn't come up from uh, this survey. So the survey was like people were just uh, interacting with home and we asked uh, uh, um, something related to how satisfied they were with the session. Uh, so what you get that you've got what is called SAT uh, uh, annotation, uh, from, uh, it was from one to five uh, and so on. But we have also the interaction of the user. And we have various, of course, interaction data. And what we, uh, of course, identify is depending on the uh, intent, which were identified by, uh, uh, by us through the survey, we also could see there is some sort of patterns. So the way user interact with the app there is it's not like a 100% correlation, but there's indication that the interactions somewhat reflect to a certain degree their intent. If you want to sleep, you just click and just that's it. If you want to build a playlist, there's going to be a lot of things. The 30 second, maybe it's fine. You just try something and then you put it on the playlist and go to listen to the, the other thing. So that's why uh, home is really offering quite a lot and so on. Uh, how we identify the intent, we did first a, a user interview to try to elicit a number of intent that we do some further validation before launching some sort of big uh, app survey and so on. And we published that uh, this year at the Worldwide Web Conference. The interesting bit is depending on the intent, the satisfaction of the user change. So intent like lean back mood or discover mood um, the uh, the uh, satisfaction label were higher in that case. And it makes sense. If you just want to lean back, it's just, we, so home is doing a good job for this, or if you want to create something. But something more in the middle, it was not so clear, and so on. So that was quite interesting. And also from a product perspective, you kind of say, okay, this we're doing good, this we're doing good, but there's other intents we're not doing so good, and so on. And this is, we haven't solved predicting the intent when the users start. That's another problem, okay? We're trying to understand the intent first. Does it, does it make sense to look into it? And can it be used for, to uh, predict uh, satisfaction? And that's what we try to do is to build uh, a model to predict satisfaction. So again, we have those uh, uh, labeled data, and we look at a global model, per intent model, and multi-level models. So what the first one need is you just include the intent into your uh, prediction model. This one you build a model per intent. And this one is to try to learn across intent. So user are not behave, well, if you do user study, user are very strange. They can behave not in the way you expect, but they're not going to change dramatically the way they use a particular application, even if they have very different intent. There's some sort of commonality in their behavior, and this is what this model is capturing, and so on. And by, you, by building this model, we get a 20% improvement in satisfaction prediction. So this is not click prediction. This is to predict whether the session is satisfactory because we had the data for this. And again, looking, what does it mean? So we have all those intent. Uh, we have the model that predicting the intent and what are the actual features that we use that are the most important for the various intents. So uh, if the number two here is this intent was quickly, uh, quickly access playlist or save music. So here the, um, the interaction data was time to success and dwell time. So you want something quick. Time to success is from the beginning of your uh, interaction with home to the click and so on. So those were the interaction signal that work particularly good for that. Um, the other one, explore artists or album more deeply. So user can be on the exploration mood. They want to discover something and, and so on. And actually that intent, which is a number eight, uh, we have a lot of interaction. We have a, a lot of kind of click that are a bit longer and so on. So uh, those signals actually reflect people trying to find something, consuming something and so on. And yeah, so still a lot of work to do uh, into this, but we're building an understanding also how to interpret the signals. How to implement this? There's going to be some intent that are easier to predict and to focus on those and then build from that. Okay. Okay. Any questions so far? No. 
Okay, so the last one. So this is something that is, is pretty hard to do, is, is diversity. Um, so I want to recall the mission of the company is to, for artists to make a living out of uh, being on, on Spotify. Um, so this is the whole area of successful artists, niche artists, new artists, less known artists, local versus global and all those kind of things. So how to ensure that uh, not all the stream are from certain artists. But to do that in a way to, uh, to be fair for everybody is first is the, the, the users are the ones that want to listen to a particular type of music. But if we keep on giving them the same music and recommending the same music, we're going to forget there's a lot, long tail, and so on. So this is what we're trying to, to look into to get a good understanding uh, how to make it work. And this, again, we use this, um, because we use the bandit algorithm, we have a lot of uh, random data, so we can try what is called policies to try various hypotheses and so on using counterfactual evaluation. So for, we go back to the 30 seconds, forget, I try to find like a successful playlist and so on. Uh, satisfaction is just 30 seconds. So we look at three dimensions. So relevance, so a playlist will have a representation, a vector representation we use in bedding, and the same for user. And relevance is going to be how close the embedding are and various kind of things, uh, which is done now uh, by uh, everybody. So this allow you more or less to, for example, uh, uh, select which playlist to consider, which song to consider, and so on. Then satisfaction is just going to be a click, in our case, the 30 seconds. And then our definition of diversity in that work uh, is a playlist is diverse if it contains track from artists belonging to different group, and for our, in that particular piece of work group is popularity. Okay, when we, we, in my team, we're not even there what it's good diversity or not so good diversity. Let's just say, okay, we want playlists where there is this distribution in terms of popularity of artists, and we can get this by just the number of streams they're having, and we can normalize and all those kind of things. So we took, uh, we took that and we're trying to understand, okay, let's just dive into the data to see what's going on here. So, this one is, um, those are all the playlists, and this is the, uh, the, uh, the diversity estimate here. So those are the, uh, it's normalized, so those are the playlists that are very diverse, and this is respect to the relevance. Of course, playlists that are highly diverse in terms of the distribution according to popularity of artists, um, there is, doesn't really coincide much with relevance, and so on. So what we're having is you view that in a separate way. If you have like something that go from uh, um, no diversity to full diversity, so more or less here is, um, sorry, the other way. Ah, yeah, so here is, uh, ah, sorry, I can't see because this is black. <laughs> So this is high relevance, this is high diversity, okay? So, and what the end is here, if you plot this, so you can just use some kind of a beta value and so on, and if you look at user satisfaction, which is the 30 second, so the very high, highly diverse um, um, a playlist, there's not so many click, but when you really go and try to, uh, if, if, you, if you look at the association with the relevance, there's a lot of click and so on. What they mean is playlists that are highly relevant to the user are going to be clicked more, and, and so on. So, but there is an area here which is okay. It's not 100% relevant to the user, but it's not too bad. And maybe there's some leeway to do some diversity, to understand what, what is happening here, and so on. And so this is what we, we're trying to do. So, of course, from a machine learning algorithm perspective, you may decide to optimize for relevance only, you may decide to optimize for diversity only, you may try to put them into together. So this is what we've been uh, trying to do. Okay, so, and we just, again, we, we didn't try to be super smart here, we were just really trying to 
to get a feeling of uh, how we could uh, somewhat integrate more diverse listening into uh, respect to the playlist um, and so on. So, and so we have this various, again, because we use this counterfactual evaluation, we can do a lot of offline analysis. So the first one is we optimize for relevance, so a high loss of diversity, no loss of relevance, and we don't, do, we don't change anything in terms of satisfaction. Uh, if you optimize for diversity, you're super good, the loss of relevance is pretty high, and loss of uh, satisfaction is also pretty high. What this means is uh, you can't just tell the user, this is good for you. You're going to become diverse. I'm going to give you some stuff. It doesn't work, okay? We may want that, but it doesn't work like this. And it, it, it's the right thing also that it doesn't work. When you try to look at a trade-off between relevance and diversity, so we have this beta value, and we can just move it around. I we kind of find the optimal kind of 0 0.7 is OK, but we still have, it's not very diverse. We don't lose relevance as much, but we still have a, a, um, a loss in, in satisfaction. Uh, <laughs> we can also have what is called guardrail. Uh, we don't want to reduce relevance below a certain value. So we still have a quite a strong loss of diversity, uh, loss of relevance less, gain of satisfaction. But what we have is, another one is, some users are going to be more open to diverse content than others. And we, we can know that. If somebody is only listening to sleeping music, let's not just try to put some rock to that person. <laughs> Okay, but if somebody listens to rock and jazz and all those kind of things, let's, maybe there's more room to try to, maybe you're going to like this and those kind of things. So by what the, list, the user is listening to, we may have an idea of the one that you're more open than this one and so on. And this is exactly, so we have a diversity affinity aware metric associated with each user and again, there's various ways to do that. We're not saying that's the right way. It was just more to really see whether this hypothesis work. And by doing that, we have a loss of diversity of uh, fifth, yeah, that's controllable. We do have still a loss of relevance, but it's not as dramatic as here. And we have actually a gain in satisfaction. And what this means is those users that we're targeting well, they're happy. And of course, we're happy. Happy user, we're happy. So. So again, this is offline, <laughs> okay? It's another story to, 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 to get it right and so on. But what this is saying is you can personalize diversity. And, and again, this would allow maybe to find a way to uh, show more tail artists, to recommend more tail artists uh, to user than just make it easy and some kind of like, I'm sure I'm going to get it right and so on. What is the most, what do people like Drake here? Yeah, yeah, because it's easy to show Drake, you get clicked, but... <laughs> okay, you don't know Drake fan here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what is the most uh, popular... What do, you, what do you listen to? <laughs> okay, you're shy, okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Okay, but that's just to give you an idea of some of the things we're trying to... Now what we're trying to do is from a machine learning perspective, like multi-objective optimization, but we still have to define what diversity means, what is the diversity metrics, and so on. So we haven't solved this yet. Okay, so some final words. Ah, okay. Um, so this was the talk. So I described the bandit algorithm around home. Um, it's being further developed. Shelves are treated differently. There's a lot of seasonali seasonality. Uh, Christmas is coming. Suddenly everything is red. <laughs> if you work on user engagement or app prediction, don't predict anything during Christmas. <laughs> because whatever you're predicting is just uh, predict exactly for that time and so on. So there's this constant change and so on, and we have to uh, adapt to it. Uh, this diversity is also an important part of related to bias. There's a big things in algo bias. So there is the algo bias by recommending the same thing, and this is what we're trying to address. There's, of course, the algo bias that is not so nice, and so on. And we're also looking into this to ensure that uh, we know what, uh, what we're doing. Um, intent is something that um, 
is hard to do, but even if we can't include it into an algorithm, we believe that by understanding the intent, we can better build algorithm or maybe understand the user population or user segment better and, and build be better for them. Success is something that fascinates me. I'm, I'm, my, my real research is about user engagement and metrics and so on. And it's just interesting how, how this works. And, and at the end, when people say, what should I optimize for? Well, at the end, sometimes you, you, it's difficult to prove is the right metric. But what I tend to say to people, if this negatively correlates with that, then maybe consider what you're doing. But there is also the whole area that is looking into uh, how success at the session level uh, kind of correlate. I don't think we are ready to talk about causality, how this with uh, uh, kind of relate to long-term engagement. And there's quite a, a lot of research. And going back specifically to Spotify, so we have home, we have uh, uh, here the success metric is based on the type of content and the type of user. Not all content is the same and not all user are the same. Uh, the intent part is the, is the moment. Uh, what people expect in the morning is very different to what they expect later. Even the intent during the day can change and so on. And this notion of diversity is also to push at least in the, in, the, in the context of this talk, into a discovery. And thank you.